Welcome back. South Korean President Park Geun-hye has met with the Chinese State Councillor Yang Jiechi in Seoul. They've been discussing bilateral ties as well as issues of common interest. Yang saying that his three-day visit came after Chinese President Xi Jinping and South Korean President Park Geun-hye agreed to deepen bilateral strategic cooperation. This was, of course, during President Park's trip to Beijing. That was back in June. As China and South Korea ties have entered a new era, both sides have been making joint efforts to try and strengthen high-level exchanges as well as exchanges in the cultural sphere. Referring to the situation on the Korean peninsula, Yang Chiu is saying that China sticks to the objectives of denuclearization on the peninsula and solving the problem through dialogue. Park also expressing congratulations on the success of the recently concluded third plenum of the CPC Central Committee, adding that South Korea is willing to work with China to promote bilateral ties. All right, this is a very important meeting. A lot of speculation about what this could mean, possibly, for our peace on the Korean Peninsula and relations with the DPRK. We're joined by Shane Harm, our correspondent who's been tracking this story in Seoul. Yang Jie Chur, the state councillor, is the number one gentleman when it comes to foreign policy here in China. He's even more powerful than the foreign minister. So when he comes calling uh, to Seoul like he is right now, I'm sure there's a lot of speculation about what that means vis-a-vis -vis the DPRK, the whole nuclear question. What kind of buzz are you picking up? Well, essentially, uh, you know, we'll get to the diplomatic issue in a moment, Zaka, but if you look at overall ties between Seoul and Beijing, they've progressed uh, quite immensely over the past two decades since diplomatic relations were first tied. And if you look at economically, uh, you know, we have free trade negotiations currently pending between the two sides. Also, from the South Korean perspective, China is uh, now Korea's largest trading partner. So from, from Seoul's perspective, it's a very important uh, bilateral relation there and uh, like you said it is a follow-up to the summit talks that were held in June by President Xi Jinping and President Park Geun-hye. So uh, Mr. Young's visit is, is, is being very closely watched here in Seoul not only for the diplomatic and political reasons but for uh, relations as a whole between the two sides. And, and Shane the elephant in the room and that is is this eventually going to move towards some kind of talks on the peninsula? You know, that is the question uh, that everyone is watching out for. Uh, how soon the six-party talks, or if the six-party talks, will resume it is hard to say right now. They haven't been held since 2008. <laughs> but if we look at the, the, the amount of activity and diplomacy that's been going on in recent weeks and months, most recently, uh, you know, Glenn Davies is in Beijing for talks with officials there. That is You've right. You've had uh, the Chinese, uh, excuse me, the Japanese and the uh, South Korean officials for the six-party talks in Washington. Uh, also, Wu Dawei, the Chinese point man uh, on the talk was in Pyongyang recently and just last week Vladimir Putin the Russian president was here in Seoul so uh, in terms of when the six-party talks will resume no one knows but uh, we what we don't want what nobody wants to see is the DPRK pushed into a corner and that would cause uh, Pyongyang possibly to, to you know con conduct some drastic measures like we saw earlier this year in the spring. Yep. Well, we don't want that do we? Uh, we'll leave it at that. Shane Harm, our correspondent there in Seoul, giving us the very latest on what's been a heck of a lot of diplomacy that's been happening around uh, this part of the world.